I was 14 when I got my first job as a dishwasher at Rudy's Big Indian Restaurant. It seemed like the things I saw there could only happen in a dream. The logo was unusual, a silhouette of a round head with an orange sunburst around it. The restaurant was named after Swami Rudrananda, or Rudy for short. He was a spiritual teacher who had an ashram in Big Indian. He was a Swami, but he wasn't from India. In fact, he had a Brooklyn accent. <laughs> the restaurant got started by coincidence. Some of Rudy's students, I call them Rudites, sold antiques from a farmhouse to support themselves. At that time, there were few places to get lunch in the area, so they started to serve health food to the customers. One of those customers was Milton Glazer, the graphic designer. He wrote about the health food served at the antique store in his New York magazine, and the restaurant business took off. I never met Rudy. He died in a plane crash five years before I started the job. Mark, who was a student of Rudy's, owned and operated the restaurant. Mark had a fierce but fun-loving energy that propelled him and swept up those around him. One night, he and a waiter were practicing kung fu in the dining room. They were swinging their staffs within inches of the fine art and the set tables. Not an item was knocked out of place. Mark was more than a boss. I missed a part. I'm going back. <laughs> the farmhouse grew into a sprawling building with many levels and rooms. There was a conservatory filled with exotic plants that surrounded a stone fountain. Throughout the building were sculptures of Hindu gods and goddesses. There were dragons and gargoyles on the walls, along with the delicate Japanese watercolors. The floors were covered with Persian rugs of vibrant design, and the tables were polished oak set with sparkling glasses. There was a stone tablet at the end of the bar with Arabic writing on it. I was told it was an ancient menu carved in stone, and it said, no substitutions. <laughs> and then we come to the part where I never met Rudy. He had died at a plane crash five years before I started the job. Mark, who was a student of Rudy's, owned and operated the restaurant. Mark had a fierce but fun-loving energy that propelled him and swept up those around him. One night, he and a waiter were practicing kung fu in the dining room. They were swinging their staffs within inches of the fine art and set tables. Not an item was marked, knocked out of place. Mark was more than a boss. He became my mentor and had a huge influence on me. He taught me valuable lessons how to live life to the fullest. He also shared with me stories and teachings of Rudy. I wish I had met this mystical man. When I turned 18, Mark taught me the Rudy meditation that I still practice today. After college, I stopped working at Rudy's, but would see Mark when I could. Mark died of cancer in the 90s. I was full of grief that I would not see him again. Then Mark started showing up in my dreams. He was there often, up to his usual pranks, demanding more work from me, or just telling me what I needed to hear. I love seeing Mark in my dreams. They are so real. In one dream, I was at the ashram, which is an old Catskill hotel painted orange in a clove of the mountains. There are statues of Buddhas and Hindu deities on the grounds. On a knoll, there's a grand stupa decorated with lines of prayer flags. There's a shrine of Rudy across the way, sitting above a reflecting pond. I'm walking with Mark and Phil, the staff-wielding waiter. Meditation class is about to begin. We are talking about life, how it comes from nothing to create something, how it grows in many directions on many levels. We enter the meditation hall, and Mark sits down next to me. I don't understand why Mark is sitting with me. He is the teacher and should be in the front of the class. I look to the front of the class, and Rudy is sitting there, with an orange glow emanating from him. We sit in dynamic stillness, and my heart opens. Then I woke up, and I thought, but was it all a dream? <laughs>